Hi, my name is Seth Ladd and welcome to this episode of Dart Tips. Today we take back control and look at Dart's control flow statements. All the greatest hits are here, if, while, for, and switch. Plus, I'll show you a helpful tweak that should make web developers very happy. Join us right now on Dart Tips. First up, if and else. No big surprises here. The conditional if statements can be followed by zero or more else if statements and can end with an else statement. Here's an example. However, I do want to point out that the condition must resolve to a Boolean. In Dart, only the Boolean value true is true. All other values are treated as false. Consider this example. Here, the variable name is a string. Of course, a string is not a bool, and therefore the else block is run. Here's the correct way to write this code. You must be more explicit, but the advantage is that the rules for truthy and faulty values are very simple to remember. For very simple conditions, you can write an if statement on one line of code. Here's an example. You might use this pattern at the very beginning of a function, when you need to check a simple condition and bail out early. Most of the time, Dart style prefers multi-line if statements with explicit curly braces. For looping, pun definitely intended, Dart has for loops. Like if statements, for loops look quite familiar. Here's an example. Let's consider a more complex example. Here, callbacks are created inside a for loop, each closing around the loop variable i. After the loop, each callback is run, printing out its number. The question is, what will print out? Or a better question is, what would you expect to print out? Unlike traditional web programming languages, Dart will print 0 and then 1. Why is this? Inside a for loop, each iteration gets its own variable. This prevents common errors when using closures inside of loops. If you want to iterate over a collection, or any iterable, and you don't care about the loop variable, you can use the for in style loop. Here's an example of a for in loop. The for in loop is just syntactic sugar for the longer iterator form. Either form works, but I'm partial to the for in as it's shorter. And shorter means less code. And less code means less chance for me to get it wrong. When you want to loop while a condition is true, you can use the while and do while loops. Unlike the for loop, which counts up or down or moves through collection, the while and do while loops more simply run a block of code until a condition is false. Here's an example. The while loop evaluates the condition before the loop and repeats the loop as long as the condition is true. The while loop is a good choice if you want to check a condition before entering the loop for the first time. The do while loop, however, evaluates the condition after the loop. This means the loop block is run at least one time. You can control a loop's execution with break and continue. Use break to stop looping. Here's an example. If shutdown requested returns false, the program breaks out of the loop. You can use continue to skip to the next loop iteration. Here's an example. You can usually use if and else statements instead of continue, but sometimes it's a bit easier on the eyes to use continue. This example wants to work with only odd numbers, so the even numbers are skipped. I'd consider continue a sometimes statement, used sparingly. Finally, in order to help with efforts to port old code over to Dart, there is the switch statement. While the syntax looks familiar, there are numerous caveats worth mentioning. You can only compare integer, string, or compile time constants. The compared objects must be instances of the same class and not of any of its subtypes, and the class must not override equal equal. One surprising aspect of switch and Dart is that non-empty case clauses must end with break, or less commonly, continue, throw, or return. That is, non-empty case clauses cannot fall through. You must explicitly end a non-empty case clause, usually with a break. Here's an example. You will get a static warning if you omit break, continue, throw, or return, and the code will error at that location at runtime. I keep saying non-empty case clauses. Why is that? It turns out that Dart supports empty case clauses which do fall through. Here's an example. The deny entry method runs for both closed and locked. The closed case clause is empty and thus does not require a break. As with many other switch statements, you can end a switch statement with a default clause. Here's an example. If no case clause matches, the default clause will run. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Dart's control flow statements. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth Ladd. And as we say here on Dart Tips, stay sharp. Click here to subscribe to our channel for more episodes of Dart Tips. We appreciate any thoughts you might have for the series. Please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any additional questions about Dart, please drop by Stack Overflow, where Dart experts are standing by to help you out. See you next time.